Hi guys, so this is going to be a post build review of the Immersion RC Zugong. Uh, this is the 10 inch frame. Uh, basically, I just wanted to sort of uh, get my GoPro out so I could do a bit of a zoom around so you could see some of the detail of this frame. Um, I can tell you a little bit more about the build, how that went, uh, things you need to look out for if you're going to build one yourself, uh, things that are good, things that are bad, stuff you can do with it, and just kind of give you a bit of a better overview now it's all together. Uh, People who have seen the unboxing will um, will know that um, it's a, a foldable frame, this is. So basically the idea is that you get a 450 sized frame, but you can fold it up and you can put it in a case like so. Uh, I will show you how that all goes together uh, in a moment. So first and foremost, let me get a little bit lower so you can see a little bit more about this. So the frame itself. Um, I paid about £170 for this frame. Um, it's quite a premium price, in my opinion, for the size of frame that you get. Um, the good news is that the quality is fantastic. There's no denying that. Um, most of the money has been spent on this rather lovely billet aluminium foldable arms. The, uh, the frame itself, which is a little bit harder to see here, cage underneath it which I will call it the cage is uh, composite material um, it feels very hard wearing um, very rigid it pops together and it uses these little t-nuts which I will point out there these are these little t-nuts um, all that is basically is just a little um, a little clip that hangs around the um, the nut and it allows you to just hold it in place whilst you screw into it. Um, keeps the weight down, which is good. It's nice and light. There's um, the, the, there's positives in that side of things. Um, you'll notice immediately on this particular one, there's a rather ugly looking piece of carbon fibre slap bang on the top of it. This is actually my modification. This is so I can mount the Zenmoose gimbal to it. So I basically have on here everything that I had on my original rather large F450. Um, this is currently with battery included. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. This is currently coming in at about 1650 grams. Um, so 1.65 kilos. Um, my 450 with the same equipment and a 5800 battery was coming in at about 1.9 kilos so it has lightened it up a little bit i did have retracts on my 450 that put a lot of weight on it so there's some explanation there um electronics that i've mounted on here is basically the dji flame wheels uh, kit you've got the motors the uh, 2212s you've then got the opto 30 amp escs so first let's talk a little bit about that um when you come to build this thing, the first thing as of January 2014 that you're going to notice is the instruction manual, as I speak, isn't great. Um, Emergen RC have said that they are improving this. Um, they they basically have produced this. They've, they're selling this now. It's in all the reputable retail shops, but the problem is that the manual is in my opinion unfortunately substandard and very much a beta item um, it desperately needs polishing it needs photos there are question marks in there for people who have actually written the manual to put sizes in for the hex screws for example um, not something that I expect from a £170 frame that comes with no electronics or anything like that. A um, little bit disappointing, but if you know what you're doing, then it's not going to be a problem. And to be honest, you're going to need to know a little bit of what you're doing because this is quite a fiddly build. Um, you, the end result is fantastic, but you've got to have patience. You've got to think out where you place everything and you've got to do uh, a little bit extra work here and there if you want to get the desired result. Um, so let's just quickly talk back about the DJI setup. Now these are the, um, as I said, the the two twelves, uh, twenty two twelves. Now, if you buy the kit, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to buy some eighteen AWG silicon cable. The reason being that this is the the black bit here that I'm holding on to. This is the stock wire. These are obviously the ESCs running under here. Now because of this pivot point, where the fold action comes in. Um, I can just demonstrate how that works in a moment. I'll do a full one so you can see. But anyway, so the idea is that when you fold it up, you swing this around. This means the ESC has to sit behind this pivot point. Um, it can overhang slightly, but it needs to sit behind it. It's designed to sit there. Because this arm swings around 
and will eventually go over the top of the second part of the arm there's got to be a nice level playing field here so you don't have a lot of room to maneuver on where you put your ESCs this is the best place um, the manual actually says get some foam um, I use a little nylon spacer kind of hard to see here um, just to bridge the gap out a little bit and by doing that it means that that nut actually kind of hard to see is not impacting the um, the ESC the other thing that you're going to need to do, as I say, you're going to need to get this cable and you're going to need to extend these motor arms. Now the manual as I speak doesn't actually mention this until you read all the way down and you see a little note saying, by now if you're a DJI motor owner you will have realised that the cables aren't long enough. In the actual spec it doesn't actually say how long a piece of cable you need, uh, whether you need bullets, anything like that. For me, and my blog has much more information about how I made this, I didn't want to cut any wires because I wanted to keep my flame wheels kit as stock as it was just in case I hated this frame and I wasn't going to get along with it or it wouldn't fit or I had problems basically. What I did is I just bought some 3.5mm bullet connectors, I bought 12 of them um, so it cost a fair bit um, and some 18 AWG wire and all I did is I extended it about I think it was about 55 millimeters worth of an extension cable the idea being that these in heart, inside these yellow heat shrinks there are actually bullet connectors so if I wanted to I've just got to cut the heat shrink off pull the bullets out and that will then give me my motors back in stock form speaking of which the other thing to note here is the uh, the ESC's Obviously on the flame wheels kit, the ESC sits a lot further away from the actual main power board. That means that you do get left quite a large amount of power cable um, because they these actually are literally soldered in just underneath that panel there for the negative and just under that panel there for the positive. Net result is you do get quite a lot of cable. I, I didn't again didn't want to cut my ESCs just in case I didn't like it just in case I wanted to go back to stock so I've done a bit of a cable tie job just just wrapped it up not not a major problem keeps it fairly neat but just be aware there's there's a little bit to play with there and that's one of those other little fiddly bits that you'll have to come across so okay so back onto the concept of actually what the Zugon does now the the interesting part about this is that it comes in the two pieces you have the cage underneath and then you have the arms and the power distribution board now the only thing and I do mean the only thing that holds the cage which has the battery and obviously all your electrics your NASA's in there um, the only thing that actually holds it on are these anti-vibration spheres so if I just zoom out a little bit here and I wobble it about you can see that the arms are completely independent from the frame itself. Now the idea of that is because the kit comes with a, uh, a Hero 3 servo based gimbal mount so you can build that, you have to buy your own servos, it doesn't come with a kit, that then mounts on the front section here idea being of course that because these are very rigid, these aluminium um, arms, that you're going to reduce the dampening effect on the camera by doing that as I sit here and speak the British weather is howling down so I haven't even got this in the air yet so I'm not doing a review of how it flies this is just literally a build log um, kind of you know what what to expect if you're going to build one of these things to look out for um, I'm very much hoping of course it's going to fly very well there's no reason it shouldn't do um, the, um, the there's a couple of question marks on the center of gravity and things like that that I will find out in due course but um, but yeah but we shall see how this works I was a bit sceptical um, in regards to these dampeners holding the whole body on um, for fear that with too much weight underneath they'd simply pop out and you know you can have a horrible accident where the thing falls apart in mid-air. Um, when you actually come to do it, it ain't going anywhere. Um, you know, Even if I put that battery in, even if I put a heavier battery on it, it's really not going to pop out. There's absolutely no reason it should do. If you had an accident with this... Um, it's going to be a bit more painful than on a 450 that's for sure for an f450 um, these are these arms will bend um, and they will bend back so we are assured by emergent RC uh, the clips you do get some spares which is good you get a quite a nice lot of spares actually um, that come in the clip 
but you know for a fact that this body is going to pop off it's going to cause carnage and chaos all over the place if it's a heavy crash uh, no different than anything else really but it's not going to be as replaceable and certainly not as cheap to replace as an f450 so bear that in mind as yet, we're still waiting for an answer from um, from Immersion RC as to spare parts. Um, obviously, the main one and the main worry is the aluminium extru extrusion and how much they're going to charge for that because £170, that's going to be a major part of this. So if you did damage it, it's probably going to cost you a fair penny to uh, to replace it. Okay, so the, uh, the other things that I think are probably worth noting, um, the... The size of the cage underneath, um, I'm sure what I'll do is I will put this camera down for a moment and I will flip it over. Okay. Right. So again, a bit hard to see because of all the equipment that I've got, but um, the size of the cage. So this bomb panel here and this composite panel here. That's basically a lot. Now that width there is very misleading because there is in fact, if I put my finger in there, a gap. Um, very good because it allows you to mount your, um, your, your TX, your various bits and bobs. I've actually mounted over on this side is the, uh, the PMU V2. Um, the biggest problem and the biggest frustration as you'll see from the pictures on my blog is that the, the the kit is designed to fit the NASA and the biggest problem with that is that they give you a little compartment in here um, and I'll show you the lines for it so there's some um, marks here that is actually a firewall and then the front of the kit stops about here so you've got a box basically inside here that is about this big and in that box you are meant to fit the NASA all its cables um, and especially the Expo and the LED cable, which of course come with a nice big, thick, well insulated, rubbery thing like um, like you do on a CAN bus, basically. A little bit smaller than that, but still. The fundamental problem is that it physically cannot fit inside that box. You you just cannot do that. If you want to use the firewall, and the firewall is actually what that is is just literally a panel that stops your battery, which slots in here um, actually slides down in here um, if you don't fit it the net result is that if you have a bump if you move around too much this battery will slide in and it will smash clear into your NASA that's obviously not going to do you any favors because especially if you that happened in flight what would happen is that it could dislodge the NASA it could rattle it um, you're gonna have a crash simple as that if that NASA comes loose whilst you're in there and it's rolling around the IMU is going to go all over the place and you are going to end up smashing into something quite nastily and uh, wasting your money so that that is definitely um, a disappointing feature to this um, to combat it for me and this is a tip for other people I personally was not comfortable not having that firewall in there Immersion RC in the manual do say it's optional. You don't have to have the firewall. Um, the problem is with that is, as I explained, that puts your NASA and all your equipment potentially in jeopardy. To force it in there, what I've done, and it's a little bit hard to see, um, and again, there's photos on the blog of this uh, in a bit more detail, is the front bulkhead has little holes in it. It has two holes. I'll just move the 8-pin cable out of there. Okay. So it has two holes in it. Now what we can see here is these are actually all of my ESC wires. So what I've done is I've actually moved the NASA all the way forward and I've had to offset it to the right ever so slightly. Um, now before anyone starts panicking about offsetting it away from the center axis of this, uh, the NASA is not something that has to be on the center axis. Um, anyone who's fitted a uh, DJI Phantom upgrade board will know that actually when you look at it it doesn't sit in the center axis of the phantom anyway it sits slightly offset all it has to do is obviously point in the right direction and be nice and firmly mounted um, so yeah so what i've done there is i've literally i've moved it forward as far as i can so the actual uh, esc wires are poking out of the hole and because there is and it's very difficult to see on here i apologize um, for, for the 
quality of the pictures here if you can't see it but basically you have to raise it up about four or five millimeters otherwise those um, those servo wires will just bang into the firewall uh, the lower part of it cause you problems however the good news is that if you do that if you brave it um, the net result is that you do end up with the NASA and the um, and the cables uh, the LED and the Expo cables all in place other people have got around that by cutting some of the insulation. So imagine this was one of the the GPA, um, the LED or the Expo cable. They've actually cut some of this plastic off, exposed some of the raw wire under there, and that's allowed them to loop it around. It's something that Immersion RC will fix. I'm pretty sure about that. If nothing else, they've already come up with and they include in the kit an ex uh, an extension lead for the GPS. Um, and all it does is it's a four pin Molex connector, but it allows it to be flexed much better. Um, to be honest, you can use that. It's a four pin connector. You don't have to use it for the GPS. You can use it for your Expo or your LED. The problem is, of course, you can't use it for both. If you can't use it for both, you can't get your firewall in and you're stuck in that place. Uh, the other suggestion that I would say, if you've got all that way and you're watching this because you're banging your head against the wall because you don't know how someone like me managed to get all of this kit on there, um, I will refer you to a product called Sugaru, S-U-G-R-U. And what that is, is this, um, it's kind of uh, silicon um, that comes out of the packet, a bit like plasticine. You mould it and it will go into a nice kind of semi-solid silicon product what you could easily do is you could create your own firewall um, just by putting a bit of that in there just to stop just a little buffer inside the cage um, what I'll do is I'll try now to get this in the light and we'll see so if you can see down there you can see there is a firewall and that's what we're talking about that partition all the way down the bottom of the cage is the thing that stops the battery um, and if you remove that I like say you you may find yourself in trouble so that's another little gripe unfortunately um, it's a minor thing if you build these things um, something of this size with this kind of technicalities on it you're gonna need to know what you're doing um, you know it's not something for a first build definitely you need patience you need equipment and you need to just really think through what you want to do okay um, the other things to mention Obviously, the kit that I've got on here, most of this stuff isn't even supposed to be mounted where it is. This is all really done in the way that I wanted it to be done. Biggest problems that I had is that I wanted to have my Zenmus um, gimbal, obviously. Um, for that, we need the... Let me spin it around so it's not in the shadow. For that, we need the... Um, uh, GCU of course so what I did was I created this carbon fiber plate which I'm going to make a lot more well aesthetically pleasing by just cornering off some of these edges um, anyone with a keen eye will notice that I have not mounted the anti-vibration spheres um, I've actually used my own mount very simple two little nylon spacers uh, a bit hard to see there um, but basically that holds the Zenmus on. This is a tried and tested method that I used on my 450 before I dismantled it for this project. Um, the, the prowess being that as long as you've got a well balanced machine, those anti-vibration spheres don't actually end up doing a huge amount. Um, this this method of nylon spaces actually just, just gets enough of the vibration out that you don't end up with a bunch of jello. This kit, even better, because of course, as I showed you before, the whole frame Actually, this whole lower section, so I can do that, is completely dampened from the motors. So in theory, as long as you've got well-balanced prop, uh, well props, there is absolutely no reason you should get vibration. Time will tell whether that's actually true, and um, you know we'll, we'll see how that goes. So the other things that I've ended up doing, because I've mounted this here, I, I've used, and I didn't want to drill into it or change it or anything, I've used the existing screw holes to actually mount this Zenmus on here, so you can see those two screws there are actually the ones that hold the frame together. I've just made the screws a little bit bigger. Two screws hold the Zenmus, so nice and simple. Um, in the future, I can add some extra screws if I feel that it's too much, too much wobble in it, anything like that. But at the moment, there's no modifications that I've done to the actual uh, Zugong frame um, at all. I've uh, and again, I've, the GPS mount, which I'll tell you about in a moment, no modifications that I've done there either. <laughs> Likewise, the other thing that I haven't modified, but I am using, are these legs. 
the legs that come with the Zugong um, are little rubber, um, little rubber jobbies, and what they do is they sit in these holes here. Um, again, too much shadow around this side. Okay, so you'll see just underneath my VTX holder, there's a little hole there. So you have two here, and then you have two here. They're about this big, and the problem is, is they're simply too small if you want to fit any of this stuff on the under tray um, of it. If I didn't use my own custom um, Fat Shark holder, it might squeeze on there. Likewise, iOSD just about fit under there, but you're going to be landing on top of it. Obviously, the biggest problem for me, because I use that plate and I use the existing screws, is that the Zenmoose hangs down. So if we look at the distance, I've actually got about, it's about a centimetre um, between the ground when it lands and the Zenmoose itself. Um, I will probably be using a bit of this magical Suguru stuff and making some little rubber balls for the ends of these just to give it a little bit more padding and just boost the height a little bit um, from that point of view. What are these? These are just the good old fashioned DJI legs that come in any flame wheels kit or you can buy them. I think they're about 12 quid for the, for the set. I've got to admit, I absolutely hated them when I was using my 450, which is why I put retracts on them. But what I've done is I've literally, they were too big for this. So what I've done is I've cut the sections down. So this bit used to be about out here. And by doing so, if I hold the camera directly over the top of it, you'll see the pivot point of the foldable is here, there, there. The idea being that, of course, you don't want legs that come out further out here, because when you fold it, it negates the whole point of having a foldable craft anyway. So that's uh, that's the decision. Anyway, battling on, um, the only other things to mention on this particular custom build, um, I've got my little uh, NASA LED mount. This is available on Shapeways that I've made. Um, this is actually the 450 version, so it's not exactly a custom fit for this, but um, yeah, it works. It holds the uh, the uh, NASA LED in place. You can still get to the LED um, USB port. The idea is it points at a 45 degree angle down towards you, um, which for me makes quite a big difference. When you're flying up there, you can actually get a much better look at it. It doesn't really matter as far as I'm concerned now, because of course I have the mini iOSD, so I'll be looking through my goggles. Um, okay, so the other thing to mention, and like I say, if you've got any questions about any of this, visit my blog, send me a reply, anything like that. Uh, the other thing that I've done um, is I've used my own GPS mount. Um, very nicely, actually, um, Emergent RC in part of this have put in, I don't know if you can see that there, they have in fact included four screws, one, two, three, four, four screw holes, and those screw holes are the exact dimensions for the standard DJI GPS mount. Um, so the little uh, the little square that comes with it, you put that in there, you add your four screws, that then allows you to have your stalk up here. Um, personally, I, I hate the stalk. Um, the one that comes with the mount, I think it's ridiculous because it's got no way of actually fixing the GPS uh, without having to use epoxy. If the epoxy comes undone, the GPS goes off, big crash, horrible. I've experimented with fold down GPS units. Um, anyone who's seen my 450 build will know that that was actually the start cause of one of the crashes that I had because I loaded everything up. I, uh, I put the battery in, I left the GPS folded down, I then turned it on it remembered that the GPS was like that. I realized, I turned it off, I then recalibrated in a place which had horrible magnetic interfer interference by the sounds of it, and a resulting crash happened once it had calibrated. Um, a good foldable if you can gonna if you're gonna do it get a foldable one but buy buy one that's as good as you can get there's one that actually has some little um, some little nuts so you'll mount the GPS um, onto the stalk and it will let you tighten that without having to use epoxy or anything like that. For me, this is actually the custom mount. I am going to be building, this is actually a concept, but I will be making one of these on Shapeways, um, which can be used on any craft. Um, all it is, it uses a really high-tech piece of equipment. This bit of white surrounding the NASA is hugely high-tech composite piece of equipment, also known as a poster tube lid. Um, Two-inch poster tube. Go on eBay, put that in, two inch poster tube lid, you'll be able to buy 20 of them for about a quid. Um, literally, it fits perfectly in there. All I've done is I've cut a little slot um, in this. I've then got this plastic bracket 
I got lucky because this came from an old monitor stand so it's got a little recess here. The one that I'm going to design will have a very similar thing um, and then all you do is you just literally notch out the front so the GPS cable can poke through. The net result is underneath as you can hopefully see there, pops through there, little hole and a cable tie and that allows you to hold it. Keeps it away from the electrics, um, keeps it just out of the uh, the prop wash, anything like that. Um, I, like I say, it's, again, it's tried and tested. It may not work as well on this as it did on the 450, but time will tell. For, certainly for me, it's a real convenience because it means you don't have to worry about knocking your GPS. You can turn the thing upside down, you can work on it. It's all there, literally everything is in the platform that you want. Um, so the only other thing that I'll do is I'll just fit the battery in there so you can see how it looks with that. Okay, battery slides in there. And a bit of belt crew. Right, so battery is now in. Let's lift it up again. Okay, so battery's all mounted. Just pop that down there. I had to actually raise this mount up a little bit. Um, again, using some of these spaces just means that the battery can slide in past the GPS without problem. And obviously, battery cables. I decided to keep the bullet connectors on here. Um, there is actually a converter to an XT60. Um, up to you. The other thing that I've done is this is my Shapeways, um, my Shapeways kit, which is the um, the Fat Sharp 250 milliwatt. Uh, VTX holder um, and this is the Fat Shark 4S version of the Fat Shark power filter that comes in the Predator V2 kit. The, the great thing about this, um, this is just um, attached with a bit of velcro that wraps around the frame internally. Great thing about this is that I can now use the 4S balance port and I can plug bump straight in there so don't need to extend any cables don't have to have any special power anything like that I can just plug it straight in that's going to power my FPV. Jobs are good so the only thing left to do now is to show you how it folds down I think you've probably been waiting for ages I'll just pop the camera down again for a moment flip it back okay so this is the beauty of this design so all you do you literally push down click it's a lovely ratchet feel to this how you go about doing this is going to be very personal to yourself. Personally, I swing that arm in there and clip. Swing that one in there. Don't have to go mad with how far in these come. Um, obviously, one of the crucial things when you're building it is to make sure that you have enough cable here not to overbend it. Um, mine is right on the limit I would say I may end up extending some of these if I find I'm having problems with it um, but you don't want too much of course because you don't want huge amounts of wires dangling down all over the place so this one comes in here like this one more and finally this one here not easy with one hand it has to be said there we go. like so jobs are good so, hold it up, and as you can see, that is a pretty nice size frame. Um, again, photos on my blog uh, would show you how big it is in comparison to, say, something like the uh, the, the uh, DJI Phantom. Okay, so, and then the great thing there, as I flip this out of the way, and I drag my case in, this is um, this is a Maplin version of a Peli case. Uh, it costs. 40 quid. Ideally, if you're in the UK, CPC do a very nice Duratools case, which is ever so slightly bigger and uh, almost half the price. The problem is that everyone knows this now, so everyone's bought them, so you can't get hold of one for love nor money. Um, so I couldn't be bothered to wait, so I just bought one from Maplin because they have it £10 off at the moment. Anyway, the point being that after doing a bit of plucking, 
there we go, we have a 450 frame in a case with no faffing whatsoever. That is literally land it, fold it, stick it in the box, put your TX back in, jobs are good. And you've got your, bl your, your blades are still on, you've got a little bit more room for spare batteries, everything like that, but that works really nicely and that's something that griped the bejesus out of me on my 450 so everything so far about the zugong some improvements needed all in all very good stay tuned subscribe i will have a flight video when it stops raining hailing and everything else that it's doing at the moment